I'm going to show you how to create an AG Grid floating filter using a React component. We're going to start with this application here. We've got a simple grid definition. Up here I've got the columns. One of the columns, the year column, is using the filter my filter, which I've defined inside here. And then we're fetching data from the server, putting it into the grid, and this is where I've defined the grid. We are going to use the grid feature, Reactive Custom Components. At the time of doing this video, you need to set the property Reactive Custom Components onto the grid tag. Soon we will make this the default and you won't need this property. Taking a closer look at the filter here, My Filter, we can see that it displays a text field. And then when the value changes on the text field, we'll call this here, which calls on model changed, which sets the model to the new value. And then for does filter pass, we compare the value to what's in the model. So if I go to year here and put in say 2008, it will filter on the year 2008. And then this method here, the use grid filter is the AG grid hook, which allows us to expose the does filter pass method back to AG grid. Okay, if there's anything here you don't understand, then I recommend you look at my video on how to create a filter for AG Grid React. For now, we're going to assume this all works because it does, we just tested it, and go back to talking about floating filters. So the first piece of code we're going to write is setting floating filter equal to true on the year column. With this set, the default read-only floating filter appears here on the right-hand side. Now, the default read-only floating filter is provided by the grid, and it doesn't do anything by itself. For example, if I put something in here, filter by 2008, nothing is appearing in the default floating filter. What we need to do is wire up our custom floating filter to tell it what to say in the read-only floating filter. So let's go into our filter, and we're going to put in a new method, and we're going to call it getModelAsString, and then expose the method using the useGridFilter hook. So here's a new method. Here we have it exposed via the useGridFilter hook. And now in my demo, if I set anything inside the filter, brown fox will appear. What would be better is instead of returning brown fox, we return back the model of the filter. Testing that again. If we put a number in now, it'll show it in the floating filter. Brilliant. So the provided default floating filter is a quick and easy way to get a floating filter for your custom filter components. But we want to do something a bit more interesting. We're going to write our own floating filter component. I'm creating a simple React component here that just returns back hello world. And then wire up that component as the floating filter component for the year column. Right, so for the year column, I've got filter, my filter, floating filter is true, and then the floating filter component is my floating filter. And then in the demo, we can see hello world is presented where the floating filter is. It's a useless floating filter, so let's put some logic into it to make it more useful. The first change I'll make is displaying the model rather than just hello world. The model we get from the React props, just like the normal filter component. And then on the right hand side, if I do a refresh, we'll see that the floating filter now shows what the filter is set to. That is cool. The floating filter right now is showing what the filter value is. It would be much better if the floating filter could change the filter value. So I'm going to code that up now. I'm going to cheat a tiny bit and go back to my filter class. And I'm going to copy all of this code out and bring it into my floating filter because you'll see that the code is kind of similar between the two. And I don't need does filter pass. That's only done by the filter. I don't need get model a string. That's only in the filter and only if I'm using the provided floating filter. And I don't need to expose any methods to the grid. I'll also take out the word filter here. Okay, onto the right hand side, do a refresh and wow we can see that the floating filter is now able to filter. And it also keeps in sync with the main filter. So if I bring this filter up here, you can see that any filter that's applied on my floating filter is also present in the real filter. And any changes I make to the real filter, likewise, will dissipate down to the floating filter. Now I'm just going to change my styles here to be more appropriate for the floating filter section. Now I can see the style here that the floating filter fits more nicely into the header and as the column width is changed, the width of the floating filter changes as well because I just have a width 100% set on it. And that is floating filters in a nutshell. So to recap, your floating filter is nice and simple. You get your value from the model and if you want to change the model, you then call on model change. The floating filter is then configured onto the column using floating filter and floating filter component. If you don't set the floating filter component, then the read-only floating filter is used by default. And for that to work, in your filter, you have to implement get model as string. 
Okay, there's one last thing I want to mention, and that's with regards to the life cycle of filters and floating filters, because they're a bit different. So to help explain this, I'm going to put in some code to show when a floating filter is created and destroyed and when a filter is created and destroyed. Right, I've put this use effect into the floating filter and it's got zero dependencies. So this will get called when the filter is created and then this will get called when the filter is destroyed. And likewise for the filter, I've done the same where I've got use effect and I've got no dependencies. So it'll get used once. This will get called when the filter is created and this will get called when the filter is destroyed. Going back to our demo, we'll bring up the dev console and do a refresh. Now the floating filter is up here, it's created and we can see in our dev console it's created and then destroyed and then created. The being created twice is because we're in strict mode in React. So let's take that out because it's going to make things confusing for us. So let's go to the index.js and take out strict mode. Okay, now when I do a refresh, floating filter created is only called once and there's a floating filter there. Now if I move the column away, so it's no longer being rendered. The floating filter is destroyed. I can see it here. Then when I bring the column back into view, the floating filter is created again. So the life cycle of the floating filter comp is tied with the visibility of the column. That's because AG Grid virtualizes the columns. If you can't see the column, the column isn't rendered into the DOM. And the same goes for the floating filters. That is different to the filter. You will notice that the filter hasn't been created yet. The filter will be created when it's shown for the first time. So here and now, the filter has been created. If I then hide the filter, it's not destroyed. If I bring it up, it's not recreated. So the instance of the filter is always there, even if you don't see the filter on the screen. And that makes sense because you could have a filter set. And if you do, that filter is always active. Even if I hide the filter, the filter will still be active in the background and does filter pass will still be getting cold in the background after the filter is no longer visible. And that is floating filters. Easy.